Heart failure is very common in the clinical setups. Whether you are in the emergency, ICU, ward, OPD, wherever. And it is very essential to pick up those important clues which are there in the history, in the presentation. And further, what is to be done for the diagnosis? What are the investigations to be sent? And very importantly is how to manage these patients effectively. And in this video, I'll cover everything which you need to know for your clinical practice and for exams. So let's get started. Heart failure can be categorized under two main headings. One based on ejection fraction, second based on which side is involved. Now, if patient has ejection fraction of less than 40%, that is termed as heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. But if patient has ejection fraction more than 50% but still presented with signs and symptoms of heart failure, that will be termed as heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. And some of the patients who present midway in, in, in the ejection fraction range of 41 to 49 percent and then that is termed as heart failure with mid-range ejection fraction. Now talking about the second heading right that is based on which side is involved. First it is further said as left ventricular heart failure or the other one is right ventricular or right-sided heart failure and third can be biventricular. Now if patient has left ventricular or left sided heart failure, obviously there will be more congestion into the lungs. Why? Because of the backlog. The left ventricle is not able to pump blood. And hence, there is much collection of the blood in the left atria and further into the lungs. And that's the reason they present with dyspnea, difficulty breathing. Initially, it can be dyspnea on exertion. Later on, dyspnea while lying down, which is called as orthopnea. Further, worsening can cause PND, which is paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. If, if you examine these patients, there will be crackles all over bilaterally. They can also present with reduced uh, breath sounds. Why? Because sometimes they are uh, associated with pleural effusion also. And very commonly when you are examining these patients, there is displaced LV apex. Also, you can hear something called as S3 gallop. So these are the findings which you tend to see when you are examining a patient, which is again very important. Do not miss those, right? Second, if we talk about the right-sided uh, heart failure, these are the patients who presents with ascites, abdominal distension. There is uh, peripheral edema. There is raised JVP. And hence, I mean, all these, all these features, they just go ahead. Why? Because RV is not, right, right ventricle is not able to pump. Hence, there is much collection in the RA. And further, there's a backlog. So patient have raised JVP, there is ascites, there is even, even there's when, when you palpate, there is tender hepatomegaly also. And very importantly, you need to ask, are you gaining weight? And that gives you a clue. And third, if I talk about, there can be patient having biventricular failure. And they, they can be features of both. Now, once the patient is in your hospital now, how do we go forward? is obviously asking for investigation. You will ask for CBC, looking for any kind of anemia, which can cause high output for cardiac failure, right? And many these are the patients who usually have pallor or usually have anemia. Second, if I talk about, is you, you need to check the renal function test, very essential, because if we are managing heart failure, you have to use the diuretics, you have to use ACE inhibitors, ARBs and all, right? So you have to check the renal function. Then electrolytes, and very importantly is again potassium. Then further, you have to you have to go ahead with checking the anti-pro BNP. Very, very, very essential. Very essential. If it is more than 400, yes, that goes in favor. Patient can have heart failure, right? Taking into account the history, the presentation, the other investigation, like chest checks, right? We have to go ahead with those also. So what I just mentioned is NT pro BNP. Then uh, other investigation which are also essential is checking for LFTs. Sometimes patients have tender hepatomegaly and all those. So you have to check the LFTs as well. And if patient presenter, you suspect there's ACS also, go ahead with troponins also. So these are the blood tests. Further, the other investigation which are required can be ECG. Obviously, the first thing you will do is ECG. Second, chest X-ray. Then 
if all those features are going in favor and anti pro BNP is also on a higher side, please go ahead with echocardiography. And if you have ACS in mind as a suspicion, then yes, you have to go with angiography. So these are the investigation you have to order, you have to go forward. And now coming on to the important part is the treatment. Now, uh, the treatment depends whether a patient presented in an acute state, acute heart failure or a chronic heart failure. In a case of acute decompensated one, patient presented to you with uh, tachypnea and there's a desaturation, not able to breathe and not able to lie down. So that is called as acute decompensated state. And definitely what you have to go forward right now is going with diuretic. And very commonly we give Lasix and that is a brand name, right? So uh, you, you go ahead with furosemide. That is a diuretic. So initially you can go ahead with 20 milligram or 40 milligram and maximum you can even go to 80 to 160 milligram. But that's the maximum, right? So try seeing uh, the, the clinical parameters, the presentation, any kind of contraindication, everything. So in, in acute state, yes, you have to go with diuretic as a pharmacological. Other thing is you have to give position. You just ask the patient to sit, right? Never allow the patient. In fact, patient will not be able to lie down also. And then you have to give oxygen to these patients. So that is how do you manage acute. The other scenario is a chronic heart failure management. Very importantly, the first line drugs are the AS inhibitors or the ARVs. Very important. Then comes, uh, and, and these are the drugs, uh, having uh, inalapril, having lisinopril. So I have mentioned the starting doses as well of ACE inhibitors, right? And then you can use ARBs also. You can use the other uh, group of drugs which are very essential are the beta blockers, having carvedilol, bisoprolol, uh, metoprolol, succinate. So these are the drugs, again, very important, very essential. The beta blockers and ACE inhibitors, they reduce the mortality and the morbidity in these patients. The third, once you have used this, then you can go with mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist, which is spanlactone or epilinone. And I have provided all those dosages over here. Then now, which is recently being added in the, uh, in the uh, NICE guidelines, is adding SGLT2 inhibitors. Very important. So even if patient is non-diabetic, then also you can go with SGLT2 inhibitors, either dapagliflozin or EMPA. And you can go ahead with 10 mg OD dosage. That is very essential. Now, once you have gone with these drugs, ACE inhibitors, ARB or ACE or ARB or beta blockers or uh, let's say spanlactone, but still patient is not responding. Now, what to do next is very important is you have to go with a group of drugs which is called as ARNI. Angiotensin receptor neprilysin inhibitor. And the important example of neprilysin inhibitor is segubitril. So they just block the breakdown of natriuretic peptide. And hence it is very effective, very effective in uh, managing. So you have a combination of segubitril valsaltin. So you go ahead with this drug, but remember you have to stop the AS inhibitors at least 36 hours before. Right, so then you can go ahead with this one. Others, add-on therapy or additional therapies, if the patient is still not able to manage, is adding Eva Braden. Whenever the heart rate is more than 75, an injection fraction is less than 35%, and patient is not being able to manage with the above drugs, then go ahead with, with Eva Braden. You can add 5 mg BD twice daily, again, depending upon the scenario. Then, some other patients, let's say, it's Afro-Caribbean and they are not, you're not uh, uh, able to add ACE inhibitors or ARBs, then in that situation, you can go ahead with hydralazine plus nitrate combination. Then further, if the scenario says patient has heart failure with atrial fibrillation, the best drug to use at this time is digoxin. And last, I would say, if patient is still not being able to manage, I mean, ejection fraction on a lower side less than 35 percent and you have tried the all the pharmacotherapy right all the all, the, all those medicines or the drugs which i just mentioned you have used you have tried that still not able to manage then you have to go with what is called a crt cardiac resynchronization therapy and and uh, very commonly you go ahead with these 
uh, CRTs or ICDs. I'll not go much in detail whenever there is QRS prolonged or recent onset LBV. So then you go ahead with these uh, therapies, right? So those are the pharmacological methods. In non-pharmacological, you just need to restrict the fluid and the salt intake. And also advise to stop smoking and alcohol as well. So that is uh, that is the major thing, right? I mean, how to investigate and how to manage these patients. And I think now you might be somewhat confident how to approach these patients, how to first of all pick up whether the patient has heart failure or not, and then the investigation to be ordered and how to manage. Hit the like button if you found this useful or maybe you can uh, give your feedback in the comment section having heart over there or whatever right if you found this video helpful and please share with your friends and colleagues who might require these these kind of videos and definitely i'll be coming up with new videos which are useful which will be useful for you in your clinical practice and exams bye bye